What's going on, people? It's now the 13th, Thursday, January. I want to send out a message of solidarity and I'll move my lamp. <laughs> <coughs> message of solidarity in these COVID in this COVID catastrophe. Um, everybody's getting sick. Everybody's getting sick. And unfortunately, some of some of those people getting sick or dying, I don't want to be one of them, and I hope you won't be one of them either. So please be careful. Um, yeah, I guess in a way, my I'm, my mindset is kind of like it was in 2020, um, which is um, I'm paying attention to the news or the propaganda, whatever it is. It's a mix, infotainment. But it really just sounds like, um, and it looks like, the um, current situation is really much, much worse than in 2020 when we, when we first went into lockdown. So I'm just personally um, locked down. Um, but it's not, that I'm, it's not that different from how I usually go about my business. I'm just really minimizing uh, trips out of the house. So, uh, hope you all, all hope you all are being safe. And the music ideas are flowing. I won't play any this morning, but um, I have been what you play, what I played yesterday. Both of those have changed already, and they're not done. And um, and. Um, the music will will come out, um, you know, that's the plan. It's like it is shaping up to be, um, I have over an album's material of new stuff already. Um, interestingly, everything doesn't necessarily work together. We'll see, we'll see. I didn't play, I played, in the last couple of days I've been working so much in my, studio I barely played any records but this is what I've honestly played and I'll start with the CD because this goes back to the 90s and I used to play this one a lot it's a drum and bass it's um various artists or a compilation it could very well be one artist just using a bunch of different names but it's called Artcore the Art of Drum and Bass. React, if you can see that, React was a label along with Instinct and a couple of others that were really pushing the uh, the drum and bass thing for a while there. And um, I think I picked this up like for a dollar and uh, ended up liking in particular the very last track on here. That's the one that saves it, Eugenics. It's a repeater. It's one that just really, just, it's good, and it's like I need to hear it again. I kind of like that. And I kind of like doing that with my music. Rather than trying to figure out how to make it longer, I, tr I try to let the music tell me if it needs to go longer. Um, because many times, it's, it's the piece, the idea or the music is done but you want to hear it again, not necessarily some more, or that it really should go longer, but let's take that journey again from start to finish. So yeah, 13th floor elevators. This is not an original, it's a reissue, but it's a good quality reissue um, by international artists. It's Texas band, probably the first psychedelic band, Rocky Erickson, quite quite an individual. I did get to see him play live. I sure did. And it was well worth it when I played South by Southwest the first time. This is a great album. And uh, there wasn't anything like this around at the time. And it opened the doors for many, many people, including ZZ Top. Here's one that I always hesitate to play because um, it's a uh, challenge. It, 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 it was a 
an experiment. Um, composer, electronic com um, artist Pierre Henri got together with Spooky Tooth and they made this album called Ceremony. And um, parts of this are good and then parts of this are just like very, very grating. Jubilation. It's like, you know, you, it's like they decided to do something and they did decided to do something with the voice and it just, and it just continues to, to the point that it's driving you crazy. And I do think that was the point of it. Uh, but there are some other tracks on here like um, Confession that um, they work, but it's not an easy listen album. Um, it's a great thing that um, Spooky Tooth did that. Now, he's playing Cluster the other day, but it's the, their second album. But I have this one. The second album is sitting out in the other room. And I, I'm not going to go grab it. This is their first album, a reissue. I do have a, an original of their second album. This is just wonderful. Wonderful stuff. It's like it's being beamed down. That cover is perfect. Again, it's like at the, t at the time there was no reference point for this sound. It was new. It really was new. I love this stuff. And these are still sitting out. You all know about Neminus. They were called Neminus originally, and then they changed the name to Biota. I think they were based out of Colorado, a collective of artists and musicians. This is their double album, Rackabones. And I also have Bellowing Room. Now, I pulled these with the idea that I hadn't listened to these for a long time. And um, perspectives change, they grow. And so I was thinking, well, let's see if this is just a bunch of pretentious um, people, um, you know, pretending. I'm happy to say that's not the case. This is really vital, interesting, organic music. They don't use the electronics. Um, it's instruments. It's stuff around the house, um, voice. Every now and then they'll break into a beat, but not for very long. And what's cool is that even though I've heard a lot of stuff like this, this is very unique. It's in the wheelhouse of Faust, but it's not Faust. It's Biota. Some good stuff. Some good stuff. So, um, I love hearing from you folks from all over the world. Thank you. And um, thank you for the feedback on the music. When I'm making music, I do not consciously call up anyone. But as people have been pointing out, and when I listen to it, it's like, well, yeah, they're right. Yeah, there's that new order. There's that craft work. It's in, it's in the DNA of what I like. But when I'm when I'm exploring ideas, I do not set out with such thoughts in mind. I mean, I've done it just to see if I can do it. I'll, you know, like Zymox and then Wire and way in the past, you know, I've done covers of Section 25 and New Order and stuff just to see if I could do it. But um, what I'm working on is, is purely original. It's just what's coming through and it feels great. And... Um, and it's saving my soul and my sanity. I'm looking at my social media, I'm talking to my friends, I'm looking at my neighbors, and people are really not in good shape mentally because of COVID mainly. And because my perspective is that because we live in a make-believe world where we're where everything comes to us through a screen. <laughs> Where's my phone? <laughs> okay, so my phone's somewhere not next to me. See how much our lives have changed? 
But life is not a TV show, and it's not on the screen. And yet, I'm certain of it, be, that we have generations who, grew, who have grown up on the screen, and their perspective on life is dictated by that more than, than I like. It shows. People to, a lot of people are not handling reality and are having, are just wanting to, you can't just tune it out. You can't have a tantrum and mommy will make it better. You can't change the channel. The unfortunate thing is that the tools that we have to our um, access to remedy this problem is the one that we can't handle, which is to just use some self-discipline and tamp it down. And the other thing that I hate, and I've said it, and it's like it's more, it's more being stated more in the news, in commentaries, is how insane the continued drive for profit by the one-tenth of one percent keeps us on this treadmill to destruction when, because it's like COVID has disrupted the supply chain in, in many ways, and yet because the bottom line is still profit as opposed to su survival, you know, if I were president, or president, or if I were some kind of official, that would be what I'd be talking about. Folks, we gotta we gotta switch gears. I mean, seriously, we need to try to get everybody on board here and just put profit on hold and 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 survival of the of the of the uh, whole planet. We can get back to that making that money. I think that's really the whole deal. Is that people who are you know making the cash? It's like they don't want to let it go. They don't want it to risk it not coming back <clears throat> so from my perspective we're trapped in that and as a result we're, we're really on a long road to um, not recovery but uh, breakdown that's what I see and I don't see anybody in charge growing up um, there was a time when it appeared that the illusion was working, that somebody's in charge somewhere, the government cares, there's smart people somewhere taking care of business. For, for me, that's gone. There ain't nobody in charge. There's no authorities that are wise, that are handling things. Nowhere. I see it real clearly, so I'm just encouraging you all, my friends, my family, to um, use radical acceptance of reality and deal with this 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 um, COVID. Take the steps that we know to take to reduce spreading. We there's too much death and sickness for us to still be talking about whether or not it's real or a hoax. Fuck that. Let's deal with what's in front of us. So that's what's on my mind, and I hope that you all are, are okay.